this is Kimberly Wilson, and welcome to the 475th edition of Tranquility Du Jour, bringing you tranquility since 2005. Tranquility Du Jour is a series of nourishing conversations about living a full and meaningful life, infused, of course, with doses of tranquility. In this week's edition, I chat with Jennifer Magadance all about zero waste. Learn what it is, how to incorporate it in those small baby steps, and what supplies to tote to the grocery store. A reminder that on Sunday, December 29th is our next online free event, Planning 2020 TDJ Style. And everyone who's purchased Year of Tranquility and or the day book and signed up for their bonuses online, you will in turn get your invite to join us and it will be via YouTube Live and you'll, of course, get the private link. So if you haven't received that yet, feel free to drop me an email or go to your bonuses page, and you will find it there. Also, New Year's Eve mini retreat, those of you who are local, I'm doing my annual yoga, reflection, dreaming, three-hour session at Yoga Works DuPont here in Washington, D.C., And then January 5th, okay, that is our next, the following uh, free event, and that will be happening 8 p.m. on a Sunday night, January 5th, and that's the Tranquility Du Jour Live New Year Fresh Start event, and would love to have you join for that. And there is a link in the show notes. You can find that at KimberlyWilson.com slash 475. So our featured guest, Jennifer Magadance, is a yoga teacher entrepreneur, and environmentalist. She's the director and founder of Luna Yoga in Old Montreal. Practicing yoga since 1996, she has a background in gymnastics, is a certified Jiva Mukti yoga teacher, and holds a degree in environmental studies from Concordia University. Her teaching emphasizes inner peace and happiness, as well as a strong connection to the earth. In addition to her teaching, she's led retreats in Canada, Mexico, and Costa Rica. In 2008, she released her first instructional DVD and followed it up in 2010. And Jennifer and I went through the Jiva Mukti Yoga teacher training. Oh, how long was it? It was like a month. It was a long time and loved being with her. And that's when we became friends. And that was 2000 and freaking seven. And so she's just an absolute dear. And I think you're going to learn a lot in this podcast. Welcome, Jen. Hi. So I don't think we've had you on the podcast. I've only had you on video when you taught me harmonium like 10 years ago. (laughs) That's right. I remember that. (laughs) And listeners, we'll have a link to that in the show notes just for your viewing pleasure. Mm -hmm. So let's chat zero waste. So whenever I was visiting you in September, you mentioned that this was something that you'd gotten into. And I was like, oh my gosh, good, because I've been wanting to interview someone on this. Mm -hmm. And so can you tell us a little bit, okay, you've got two boys, you've got a partner, you have a business. Um, And so I'd love to know what is zero waste, if you could explain that to our listeners, and then really how you're making that happen within your household. Mm -hmm. So zero waste um, is like eliminating both your garbage and your recycling. Um, And producing like there's, there's a handful of people or maybe more than a handful that that can do it where they, you know, have all their waste from the whole year just in a, a mason jar, which is a little bit more challenging. I, I have to say that I'm not zero waste. I'm more of like a reducitarian, which is something I think you um, got me onto that that um, concept of reducing waste. But they call it the zero waste lifestyle. Um, but I feel like a lot of people get a little discouraged by that title. And sometimes people like we sell the book at the studio and some people get a little like overwhelmed by the word zero waste. So I think, um, just reducing your waste is like a huge, huge deal makes a big difference. And there's a great quote that I I often see it in like my zero waste social media posts where they say, we don't need a handful of people doing zero waste perfectly. We need millions of people doing it imperfectly. And I I love that. So we just, I sort of read this book. Somebody gave me a book for, um, I think it was my birthday last year. 
and it's called Zero Waste by Bea Johnson. And that sort of is what kicked it off. I, you know, was always into reducing our waste, but then I read that book and it's sort of like, it shows you how much waste each household is making every year. And, um, you know, sometimes you just need to sort of have it right in your face to, to force you to do it. And then she gives you all kinds of ideas on how you can reduce your waste. And, um, the number one thing they have you do right at the beginning, because there's another book also that I, I have, um, called zero waste from another author. And both the authors are like, first thing to do is just have a look at your trash at the end of the week, like both your garbage, your recycling and your compost. And then from there, um, you can sort of see where you can make some differences. Yeah. And what did you notice whenever you were like, hmm, I'm taking a look at this? Yeah, totally. Well, f- I mean, first thing is like the food waste, like um, the packaging, food packaging. Like at most of the grocery stores, at least in our neighborhood, it's like you buy strawberries and they're in those, um, I think they call them clamshell packaging. And then like your cucumber is an individual packaging and your you know, every, all the food comes in packaging. So that was a big thing for us. And that was, um, I'm going to say a pretty easy switch for me because you can either choose the stuff that's not in plastic at the grocery store. Like often there's like a cucumber with plastic and then there's another type of cucumber that has no plastic. So I started by doing that. And then I started making it a habit of going to the market every week. And most of the time the markets have minimal packaging or no packaging and you can just bring your own bags so I bought um there's these cute mesh bags you can get there's tons of different companies that sell them and you can bring your mesh bags and then just get all your produce in those instead and then have like a big cloth bag to put all your mesh bags filled with fruits and veggies and then I'm going to you know the bulk store was like another huge change for me so you know, grocery stores are starting to catch on and it depends like which country you're in. They're trying to reduce their plastic on and their packaging. Um, but if you really want to reduce your packaging even more, then going to the bulk store is like a great way of doing it. And you bring your own, you know, containers and I'll bring often like old like mustard jars or old plastic bags that I have and some cloth bags. And then you can get your, you know, your grains and your teas. And even there's, you know, some places that have like, you can get your tofu and, um, you know, your honey, if you have honey or oils and all your toiletries, like your shampoo and your soaps and everything. So it's pretty amazing. And would you just Google like bulk store in my area? Like, how did you find yours? Yeah, that's exactly what I did. I Googled uh, bulk and then since we're in Montreal, I did en vrac, which is basically the same thing as bulk in my area. And yeah, there's a whole bunch that came up. And then I just started going to different ones each week, um, each time I needed something. And then I eventually figured out which ones, you know, have what I need and which ones have the best prices and which ones are most convenient for me. And that's your little Monday outing with Arlo, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Monday morning, we go to the market and there actually happens to be a bulk store right in the market. But then there's another one that has some, you know, other items, like I said, like the tofu and vegan mayo and toothpaste and all kinds of stuff. So I, I often make a second stop to that place. And then there's always a couple items that I just can't seem to find um, without packaging. So, or it's, or it's too expensive. So then I'll, I'll switch and just go to the regular grocery store. So for something like vegan mayo, is it just like in a big vat and you put it yeah. in? Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It comes in a big container and then I bring my little container and I bring it to the counter and then she just fills up my container. And they even have like veggie pate as well. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Like I'm used to in the States, we've got um, bulk sections typically in some of the larger grocery stores, but I'm not aware of like overall bulk stores, but I will definitely look into that. And who knew? Like with toothpaste, how do you do that? That's the one thing I was just about to try. And I, don't, I haven't figured out what container to bring for the toothpaste. Um, but yeah, a lot of bulk stores I think are known, like most of them will have like flour and oats and like all those dried goods, but now they're starting to, you know, grow and there's more interest for other items. So yeah, you just, you know, bring your own containers and, and I, 
you know, I haven't really gone out and bought that many containers because you already have so many, you know, like Tupperware, just we have it in our storage already. And then like, I still do buy bread in a plastic, it comes in a plastic bag. So I just save that plastic bag each time. And then I use that for the bulk store. Oh, okay. No, that's great. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things too that you gave me is something to put over food. And listeners, I'll take a photo of it and put it in the show notes because it's kind of cool to see rather than saran wrap. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, those are great. So that was first introduced to me. Um, There's a company called Abigo and they make these um, food wraps uh, with honey. And then there's another company that I found called Earthology and they do it with um, a plant-based wax. So they're, they're vegan, but both of them are amazing a substitute for saran wrap or plastic wrap. So you can use them to, you know, if you use like half of a pepper, then you can wrap the pepper in it. Or if you have like, you know, an unfinished bowl of soup or something, you can put it on top of that. And I use them for sandwiches too, for when I go to work. Yeah. And so you'll just wrap your sandwich in it. Mm -hmm, Exactly. Yeah. They're great. And they last, I mean, I've had my first set for, I'd say at least three years. I still use them. And, you know, I haven't taken mine out of the package yet because I knew we were doing this podcast and I wanted to get a photo of it. Um, But when I take it out, do you need to rinse it or anything to get the stickiness? No, no, they're sticky right away. And then to clean them, you just, you can just rinse them like you would dishes, just like a tiny light scrub with, you know, some soapy water and just, and just wash them like that and then put them, hang them to dry or put them in a dry rack. So what are some of your favorite ways to avoid making trash like that you have come up with over, you know, the past few months as you've been working with this? And I wonder how you've gotten the kids involved. The the easy ones are, you know, having a water bottle, of course, and a a reusable coffee mug. So we go get our chai lattes and our matcha lattes and um, just changing the habit of just going to the grocery store. That was that was a big thing. And um you know, make taking time and making it a, a routine of going to the bulk store, going to the to the market. And then um, I really like to cook. So when you cook from scratch, you end up using a lot less waste because all the pre-made stuff comes in packaging. And um, for the kids, every week I make a big batch of muffins. So that way when Levi goes to school, he's got, I've got him a cute little muffin container that's made out of metal. And um, he has his little homemade vegan muffins, which saves buying like, often you can buy like um, snacks for lunch boxes and it's like 24 individually wrapped cookies in another box that's, you know, made covered in plastic. So making your own snacks is great. And then um, two other things that are like more like, uh, not taboo subjects, but like not talked about subjects is menstrual items. Um, there's the diva cup and then there's a whole bunch of other companies that do these menstrual cups. Those are amazing. Um, cause I've just was refreshing myself on some of the, the numbers and they say that, um, one single woman uses about 15,000, um, like tampons and pads in their lifetime. So if you think of it in that number, it's like, wow, if everybody switched to a menstrual cup, that could be a huge impact because they, you know, are finding all kinds of those plastic applicators are washing up on the beaches and inside um, animals. So menstrual cups and the period underwear, there's a great company called Thinks um, and then a bunch of other companies too that do the period underwear, which saves you having um, to use pads. And it, it saves a lot of money too, because you buy one set, you know, and you keep them for years in the diva cup as well. So that's, um, one of my favorite ways of avoiding trash as well as the Tushi, which is a, a bidet that we put on our toilet. And, um, instead of using a whole bunch of toilet paper, you're just using a little bit of water and you're nice and clean too. Jen swears by this, listeners. She <laughs> loves this. <laughs> I do. <laughs> we wanted to try it at her house, and we were like, I don't know. I was like scared. So I love it. Um, yeah, and you saw the woman who created that speak recently, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mickey Agrawal. She actually created both those companies, the Thinks Underwear 
and the two sheep a days. And she has a book, is that correct? I think she has two books. Yeah. Um, one is, um, I'm blanking on the name, but she does have two good books. Mm. Okay. It's not going to come to me. Yeah. No worries. Listeners, I'll put a link in the show notes to those. Um, mm-hmm. Because she talks a bit about zero waste, no? Yeah, she does. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, that was part of her inspiration was to to help, you know, do something that's more eco-friendly and then also to sort of change people's attitudes. You know, it's like sort of periods are not, it's sort of like a, you don't talk about these things or, you know, a bidet, those things too. Wipe, how you wipe your bum, those are kind of like not so um, popular topics. So she was sort of like, let's change our attitude around this, you know, Women are having their periods every month, you know, all over the world and creating like, you know, thousands of tons of garbage. Um, what can we do about this? And yeah, so she's, she's definitely inspirational. I do, and she's actually a Montrealer, but she now lives in New York. Now, what would you say on average, like has been the shift within your family, kind of with the amount of garbage produced since you started this? Hmm. The shift. Well, I think it's definitely just like noticing it. Once you, once you start picking up on it, you noticing it you, when you're more aware of it and the kids are more aware of it too. Like, um, I try to, you know, talk to them about it without being too preachy, but when you just taking note of how much garbage you make, it, it makes you second guess each time you buy something, you know? And also if you are going to buy something, like, what are you going to buy? Like, Levi is, I think, you know, is really into San Pellegrino. So I try to get him to buy at least the glass San Pellegrino instead of the plastic one, you know? And I mean, surprisingly, the kids are learning all about this in school too. And like when you, when we went to one of their school performances, it's like, what do you hope and dream for? And half of them are talking about a world without plastic. So I think it's, it's like really cool. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that. And, you know, one of the big ways that I've been conscious of this is like with um, plastic um, utensils, right? And straws. I'm always like, no straws as if they're like the devil, you know? So I've got Mm -hmm. my little metal straw. And then I always carry a fork because honestly, too, if I need, if I'm like, oh, I should have had a spoon, the fork still works. But, you know, it just saves so much of grabbing, even if it's like recycled plastic. It's still like water why or compostable even it's like why get that when you can easily tote a little metal one yeah 100 percent. yeah i remember you had that in new york it's great having a fork on you and having like i try to carry either a water bottle or a coffee mug with me um and then always i have a bag that sort of like folds into a little ball that i can use you know if i'm out shopping for clothes or, or i'm out shopping for groceries just like always having that stuff on you makes a huge difference well, and another thing that we did when we were recently in New York is we hit Goodwill and Miss Jen picked up quite a few pieces. I did. Yeah, that's definitely a big thing is shopping secondhand or shopping vintage. I mean, yeah, going for clothes is fun. And then online, you can get everything, you know, like Levi wanted a, a video game uh, console for his birthday last year. So we just went online and people are selling off their old video games and the consoles and everything. So rather than going out and buying something new, you know, you can take advantage of all the stuff out there and it's, uh, it's a lot cheaper for you too. Have you noticed any difference in your um, cost of things? Like has your cost of, you know, food gone down? Has your cost of <laughs> toys or, you know, various products that you buy for the household gone down since you made this switch? Yes, definitely. Um for sure. Like a lot of the, the bulk stuff is, is cheaper than buying the package stuff, but it depends because a lot of the bulk stores are also organic. So, I mean, if you compare organic to organic, for sure, it's cheaper in the bulk store. But if you're buying, like my mom recently went and bought oats at the bulk store and normally she would, you know, get them at the regular grocery store and they ended up being more expensive because she accidentally picked the like gluten-free organic ones, you know, but, um, overall, it's, it is cheaper to buy bulk and you have your own stuff for sure. And then, yeah, I mean, I would have bought a whole bunch of stuff at J crew for like four times the price compared to what we bought at that vintage shop in New York. 
Yeah, you made you you got out of there with a lot of great new things. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, and it feels good too, right? You don't like every time I buy new stuff, I feel like a little bit guilty. But when you buy like second hand stuff or used stuff, you feel good about it. Totally. I mean, I got that blazer, which God only knows what that would have cost, but a theory blazer, which I don't really know theory, the brand. I just know it's expensive because it has its own store. And, um, you know, a great little fitted thing for $15 at Goodwill. So it's, and I don't know that it had been worn because it still had, you know how on the back of jackets, they'll do that little X with, with um, thread to keep the, you know, the flaps down and it hadn't been cut. So I don't think it had even been worn. Yeah, I know. It's amazing. Now, what would you say has been kind of most surprising or challenging about the switch? Because I just picture you going to the grocery store and showing up with all these mason jars and things along those lines. So it probably took a little while to get used to like, okay, what do I tote? Definitely. And like the first time I went into a bulk store, I felt like a little bit out of place. You know, I didn't really know like how it worked. And then I, I, now I'm super comfortable with it. And I, I understand like when you walk into the store, you have your own, you know, mason jars and then you have to weigh them so that, and then you have the weight written down on the mason jar. And then when you fill your item up, you also need to take the code so that you know what's in it. And then you bring the code and your filled mason jar to the cash. And so there's, you know, it was like a little bit of a, a learning curve. That's, it was, you know, didn't take much time. Um, but I feel like what's challenging is it just things take a little bit more time. Like I could definitely go to the grocery store and get everything in one shot as opposed to going to the market and then going to the bulk store. Like it takes a little longer, but I always make a little event out of it. And, and I go with Arlo who's four and he loves to like fill up the bags and fill up the mason jars. Like he wants to be a part of it. And then when we're at the market, um, you know, they all, all the farmers are getting to know him. So they often like hand him a cucumber or an apple or something. So he's, you know, it's like a, it's an event. We'll sometimes go for a latte or go for lunch too, but it does take a little bit more time. And then, um, you know, the first couple of times I didn't have the right containers and now I'm, I'm gathering up more containers and more bags. So you just kind of got to change your routine. And then the, the other challenging thing can be like, it's not that often, but sometimes you feel that judgment from other people. Like I'll have a, I have a friend who said to me like, like, Oh, right. You don't use plastic. Like kind of like the same attitude. Sometimes people get towards vegetarians, you know, um, you feel that judgment, like they know they should be doing it too. So they kind of like, um, make you feel that you're acting as if you're better than them, although you're just trying to do your own little piece in the world, you know, but in general, people have been surprisingly like really interested in it and inspired by it. And, um, I even brought a container this summer to a little restaurant down the street on even Golmondo, which I'm sure, you know, we've taken you there and it's like a really busy, popular restaurant. So I was like a little hesitant to bring in my own container and wasn't sure how they would react, but they were super nice. And they were like, Oh my gosh, what a great idea. And we, yeah, we should, if only more people would do this. So I think most in most, um, the challenging part is just the time and changing habits, just changing habits. That's it. And whenever you say you took it to the restaurant, was it for your to-go items? Yeah, ah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Because mm -hmm. if you think it's often styrofoam or sometimes it is, you know, those plastic containers that have a top that, you know, you can reuse and reuse, reuse. Um, but still, if you can bring your own, then why mm -hmm. not? Yeah. And then if you, you know, also get in the habit of saying like, I don't need a napkin. I don't need a fork. Cause you know, they usually just automatically pack it with like two napkins, a fork, maybe like salt or sugar, depending what you're getting. So if you can kind of get in the habit of saying like, I don't need anything. Thank you. I've got everything at home, you know, or I'm at the office, I've got everything. And then just having, we have a little jar at the studio where we have a bunch of forks and cups and napkins and things like that. Yeah. I love that. I think that's a great reminder too, for listeners who you know, even in their work environments, it's like having these things there if possible, right? Versus all of the plastic. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, and somebody just has to be willing to wash, which is not the end of the world. It's a lot better than, 
you know, tossing the plastic constantly. Mm -hmm, For sure. Even like the reusable mugs, you know, I mean, how many people have so many extra mugs at home? And if you took those into Mm -hmm. the office, right, versus those, uh, you know, the paper cups or the styrofoam or whatever it is, it's, you know, these little things make a difference. They do. And sometimes just mentioning it too, like they're our favorite coffee shop down the street. Um, we always bring our reusable mugs and, you know, the guy behind the counter will comment on them or somebody will comment on them. And I just kept suggesting, Hey, you should sell them here. You know, I'm sure people will be into them. And I've been suggesting that for like over a year. And he finally actually did it this summer. And he was like, Oh my God, they're selling like hotcakes. So sometimes it just takes like somebody suggesting it or being annoying and suggesting it several times. (laughs) And then, uh, you know, (laughs) makes a difference. Yeah. And, you know, you are really good about the, because <laughs> I know in New York, it was always like, can I get a matcha latte in my mug? Um, <laughs> yeah. Which is crazy, listeners, because she took that to New York City. Like, I always have my water bottle, like reusable. I would never go anywhere in the world without it. But my thermos is a Stanley. I don't know if you remember those from like the 70s. So that's like really heavy, probably two or three pounds. Mm-hmm. And so I don't tend to tote that, but maybe if I got a lighter weight one, you know, and then I would do the same. I also have the reusable Starbucks one. And so if I go to a Starbucks, I've got the cold and then I've got the hot cup and then I can take that there and then it makes it easy also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100% getting one that you like so that you're going to use it. And the the reason I was able to bring that one to New York is I can use it for water or for coffee. So it's kind of a double. And like, when Jason goes on tour, he always, you know, gets coffee and water. So I got him one too that doesn't spill. So you can like, it has this top that you can kind of push down and then it doesn't spill because he's always just shoving stuff in his bag. Um, so yeah, just finding one that's not too heavy too. Like the glass ones are really popular and I do love them, but it's heavy. So I'm sort of less likely to carry a glass one around. Right, right. Or a big metal one from the 70s. Mm-hmm. Now, what uh, tips would you have for listeners who want to make the switch? I mean, it's holiday time, right? So people are going to be getting so many things that come in a lot of packaging. And packaging can be very cute, but we can also do it eco, right? By wrapping with uh, reusable paper and newspaper and things along those lines. So what would you what would you recommend? Mm-hmm. Well, definitely for the holiday season, like you said, wrapping a newspaper and stuff, and then gifting things that are like consumables, which I think you often do, like soaps that you're going to use. It's not just going to build up more garbage or gifting um, like outings, like a gift certificate for, you know, your favorite restaurant or your favorite yoga studio, or also doing like a charitable donation in their name. Things like that can be a way of, um, you know, avoiding giving more stuff that's going to end up in the landfill. And then like outside of just holiday season, I think the biggest thing you can do is just like have a look at your garbage and and just think, hmm, where could I easily make a difference? Like um, to me, buying a Diva cup versus buying like a box of tampons every, you know, couple of months or pads, that's like was an easy switch for me. Um, and it was something I actually did when I was 19 and then sort of gave it up and Now I've gone back to it. That's easy. And then, yeah, just Googling where are there bulk stores in my neighborhood and and just go into it and see. Um, You don't even have to buy anything the first time, but just like checking it out, seeing what's available to you. Um, And then like also what I did was I followed a bunch of zero waste people on Instagram and they just post like ideas constantly. And it's inspiring to see other people doing things. Um, so those are like some really easy things you can do. Yeah. And, you know, I, I like the idea too of these getting the mason jars, which are super cute and they're great for drinking from. Like I've got a green smoothie in front of me and a mason jar and I just rinse it out every day and then reuse it. And, um, you know, and it's just perfect. Like I don't put it through the dishwasher, which I probably should, but I'm like, no, I want it there in the morning, you know? Um, so there's just little, little things like that. And, and I always have one of those little mesh bags in my bag also, which are great because they expand to like four times the size if you're going to the grocery store 
store or whatever. And you never know when you're like, oh, I'm going to pick this up or pick that up. And, you know, rather than getting a plastic bag, if you can avoid it, then why not? And I also have a big bag, kind of like you, right? So we can always be like, oh, no, I'll just shove the cereal box or, you know, whatever it is into my into my purse. Mm-hmm. Totally. And when you're at the grocery store, too, like um, another easy thing to do is instead of like putting all your apples in a plastic bag and all your onions in a plastic bag, you can just say no if you don't want the mesh bags. You can just, you know, put them individually, you know, on the, what do you call those little things where they roll it up to the cash? Conveyor belt. Conveyor belt. Thank you. You can put that on individually. You don't need a plastic bag. Cause you know, often you see people and they have like 10 plastic bags going into a plastic bag. So that's something like really easy to do. Mm, yeah, no, that's a great point. And I realized I just said cereal box and really we should be going to the bookstore and not getting a box of cereal, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But sometimes it's challenging finding your cereal that you like at a bulk store. I understand, you know, but it, every little bit counts. And Absolutely. It, yeah. And just saying no to the stuff that you know you're not going to, or you're just going to throw in the garbage. Like, you know, people often hand you flyers and you literally take it and then you chuck it in the garbage, you know? So just saying, no, thank you, you know, or like at the studio, we just stopped printing flyers and we just put a little icon and we're like, take a photo instead. So having a phone on you and just taking photos of stuff is great instead of grabbing business cards and flyers and things like that. Mm, yeah, that's a great idea. Hmm. Because I know from the yoga studio days how much money to, you know, that we spent on printing those schedules. And you're like, what do people do with them? I mean, they probably put them on their fridge or something, but it's like, it's so much easier to just look online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would you say are some of your favorite zero waste resources? Um, you know, one of my favorite over the years, but I don't think she's updating as much as um, Paris to go. I don't know if you've come across her, but she's lovely. No. no, I don't know that one. Does she have? Does she have a book? Or she doesn't have a book, but she had a really popular blog, and she lived in Paris for a while. And she was so great. She actually came and spoke at two of our pinning in Paris retreats. Um, Ariana is her name, and I had her on the podcast. Gosh, maybe five, six years ago. But yes, yeah, she's got a lot of zero waste resources. But I don't think she's updating her blog as much anymore, but it is beautiful. And she's one of those who's like, here are the 10 clothing items that I own. And here is my toothbrush. And you know, where it's like, and hasn't washed her hair in three years. And it's super luxe. It's like gorgeous, you know, so it's really interesting. Um, you know, so you can go in so many different directions with this. But you know, for our listeners who may be like, um, I want to dip my toe in the water and still wash my hair. Like, what would you yeah. recommend? <laughs> totally. Um, well, for the hair, particularly shampoo bars are like all the ra rage in Montreal. I don't know if it is like that in the States too, but the, um, there's shampoo bars instead of the liquid and they always come in like biodegradable packaging. And, um, one of the girls here, Shannon, she, she makes them in her company, Audrey, she's got all like all of her products are vegan, all natural and all in like minimal packaging or biodegradable packaging. So I love her stuff. Um, and then the Thinks underwear, the um, Tushi bidets, and then the two, my two favorite books is the Zero Waste by Bea Johnson and Zero Waste by Shia Su. And they both have different things to offer. I like Bea Johnson because um, she was like the first person to write about zero waste. I think she was one of the first zero waste people who wrote a book. Um, and then I let, and she's got two kids, so I, she can, I can kind of relate to that. And then she is Sue. She has a book called Zero Waste as well, and she's vegan, so she kind of gets over to those vegan ideas too. Um, and then, like I said, just every on social media, there's a gazillion zero wasters. I, I can't think of one in particular that I love, but just if you punch in zero waste, they're all they all are in, inspirational. Yeah, and I love because it does often go hand in hand with minimalism and veganism, and you—I know, mean, so many different or, or vegetarianism, whatever um, you know, resonates most for people or reducitarianism. And um, yeah, it is. It's just this way of being like more conscious and um, questioning kind of the way we've always done things. Um, there's that Maya Angelou quote that's basically like, "When I knew better, I did better," right? And so you know, it's not about perfection, as you said. It's just about making small tweaks like get a freaking metal or silicone um straw and there you go yeah you know absolutely great well any final oh oh 
Um, well, any final thoughts about zero waste? I think it comes back to the quote that I said at the beginning. We don't need a handful of people doing zero waste perfectly. We need millions of people doing it imperfectly. I love that. Um, it really, I feel like each person makes such a huge difference. And I think, you know, climate change and the environment are such huge topics um, in the world today. And a lot of people are like pushing for the government to do something and for sure they should. But I think just recognizing that each individual makes a huge difference. So like every time you go out and you bring your mug, instead of getting a plastic one or getting like one of those cardboardy ones, you should, you know, feel good about it. And, you know, my last question for you, Jen, is the name of this podcast is Tranquility Du Jour. So my question for you is how do you find tranquility in your everyday being a mama to two boys, well, three if we count Jason, you know, <laughs> partner to Jason, um, running a yoga studio and just being an overall fabulous lady. Aw, well, I number one, make sure that I do yoga at least three times a week. And that's, that's huge for me. I, um, I need to get outside and be in nature. So all those things bring me tranquility. And then, you know, just, I constantly remind myself of how lucky I am. Um, you know, for the life I have, for everything in my life. So just being mindful and being grateful and exercise, eating well makes me feel good and just trying to be in the moment. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Jen, for being here with us today and for the beautiful work you put out into the world. Aw, thank you for having me on your show. Savvy Sources. You can find Jennifer on Twitter at Jen Magadance. That's M-A-A-G-E-N-D-A-N-S. On Facebook, Jennifer Magadance. And on Instagram, Jen Magadance. Now, in the show notes, you're going to find a lot of resources. You're going to find a resource of the two that she mentioned, Zero Waste Home and Zero Waste, by the two lovely ladies that she mentioned. Um, all sorts of great information there. Shampoo bars, food wrap, bidet, mesh produce bags, and more. You're also going to find that video that I mentioned of Jen teaching me the harmonium 10 years ago, 2009. What's funny, she taught me that, and then I was in India shortly thereafter, maybe a month or two after, had a private harmonium lesson, and the teacher stops midway, looks at me, and was like, um, I think we need more time. <laughs> I was like, I'm only here a week. So I don't think he was very um, uh, impressed with my kirtan skills. So needless to say, I have hung up my harmonium, but I do love to listen to it. Now, I wanted to mention, and I'll put a link in the show notes also to Give a Shit, Do Good, Live Better, Save the Planet, which is a book that you guys may remember my interview with Ashley early in the year. Well, anyway, I was reading back through it and I saw she has this whole thing on page 120, food shopping and what you should bring to the grocery store. So, and this is something also that Jennifer talked about, but I just thought it was helpful to have this kind of laid out cloth shopping bags cloth food bags in varying sizes, glass jars and bottles, reusable dry erase marker or wax pencil or washable crayon to mark the bulk items. And this was great, and I can't wait to check it out, the Bulk Finder app from Zero Waste Home. Because you will you may recall I asked Jennifer, I was like, how do you know like where to get your bulk items other than like, you know, some of the larger grocery stores? And I thought it was really interesting that there is an entire app for this. So um, I will have a link to that also in the show notes. So be sure to check it out. And also a big, big happy holidays to everyone. I hope that you are traveling safely and settling in for a nice few days of rest and relaxation. And let's stay connected. I love hearing from you. Please, if you have a moment to share a review of the podcast on iTunes or over on Amazon with any of my books would be so, so grateful. Also, visit KimberlyWilson.com slash podcast for more episodes and the Tranquility Du Jour podcast app. Of course, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast app, such as Apple Podcasts, Overcast, gosh, iTunes, Spotify, etc. 
And if you'd like to receive a little dose of love every so often in your inbox, sign up for Love Notes. And this gives you exclusive content, personal updates, giveaways, and access to multimedia resources. There's also a link to my six books, ways to find me on social media, and a link to my locally sewn vegan eco-friendly clothing line, Tranquility. Wishing you a wonderful, wonderful holiday season. And thanks again for tuning in and listening. You're beautiful. And I can't wait to connect again in 2020. (laughs) 